This is Rebecca Chip the God, Paris Olympian, Ugandan athlete, multi-time world championship qualifier. She just made headlines this morning because of a very, very unfortunate situation. I woke up and I've been getting a lot of DMs about this, so I decided I'll speak on it on the video. I was sent an article by the BBC that read, Ugandan athlete Rebecca Chip the God is in critical condition in a Kenyan hospital after allegedly being doused with petroleum and set on fire by her former boyfriend. So off rip, this is a ridiculous story. I seen that she was in super, super critical condition because her boyfriend and her were arguing over some land that she owned or a house that she owned. And he was through messing with her and he threw gas on her and set her ablaze. It continued to read, the 33-year-old marathoner who competed at the recent Paris Olympics has suffered extensive burns, and that was said by the doctor who treated her. She was attacked at her home in western Kenya, where she's been training. There are concerns about the increased cases of violence against female athletes in Kenya, some which have resulted in death. It's said that she's been rescued by neighbors after the incident that happened on Sunday at her home in a small town in Kenya. She was returning from church with her two children when she was targeted. Imagine that. you getting out of church. You got your kids. You think you're about to go home and probably cook dinner for the family. And all of a sudden, bro show up and he got other intentions. Like, that's terrible. The couple was arguing outside their house. During the altercation, the boyfriend was seen pouring liquid on the woman before burning her. That's what the neighbor said. Miss Chepta guy is from a region across the border in Uganda. Said to have bought a piece of land in the country and a house to be near Kenya, many athletic training facilities. A report filed by local police stated that the two had been in disputes over the, um, the house that she owned and the land that she owned. Then the hospital senior director of clinic services, Dr. Owen Binnock told journalists that a high-profile patient had been fully sedated because of the extent of the burns. He said the hospital was well-equipped to deal with the difficult situation that both patients were in. So not only did she get burned, I think it's believed that he got burned as well, but nowhere near the conditions in which she was burned, but it's just a whole ridiculous situation on his behalf. Like, honestly, how bored do you have to be as a guy to go disturb somebody peace on Sunday after church, pull up on her with her kids and set her on fire. Now she's in critical condition. But that's really the um, thing about these countries. They typically allow like men to, you know, beat women and things of that nature. And that's their culture. But some of these guys honestly take it too far. Like if your country allows you to beat women, like, that's nothing that I agree with, but if that's your country culture, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. But if you go so far as to set her on fire and torture and things like that, that's honestly ridiculous. The article also stated, in April 2022, another female runner, uh, Damaris Matu, was found strangled in the home with a pillow over her face in the Rift Valley town of Iden. And then, in the common months, a record-breaking long-distance runner, Angus Triop, was found stabbed to death in the same town. In both cases, their partner had been identified by authorities as the, same, as the main suspect. Miss Triop's husband is facing murder charges, which he denies, while a search for Miss Matu's boyfriend continues. This is ridiculous. So, there is like a whole... That's what I'm saying. It's their culture there to be aggressive and be violent with, with different women. But a lot of these guys just take it way too far. Like, if you go as to far as, like, you beating a woman or you, you know, and, like, you know, these little skinny women running distance, they be 87 pounds. They can't defend themselves against these men. So they just hoping and praying that they get somebody that's not going to be, be violent to them. And these guys are taking it way too far. They stabbing them and setting them on fire. This whole whole situation is ridiculous and it feels just like a one-time occurrence it'd be like ah oh, that's highly unfortunate but we can move past this and learn to grow but this is a a repeated occurrence in these countries and there is nothing really being done about it that's why these guys are continuing to do it because you can't convince me that all of these great distance runners 
they all just go get these crazy husbands. Like, no, that's just the culture there, and it's being promoted, and they need to do something about it. And the article also ended by saying that men are also being targeted. Last December, another Ugandan athlete, uh, Benjamin Kiplagat, was stabbed to death by assailants in his hometown. So it's really sounded like Kenya and Uganda really getting down with the violence. And they doing a whole bunch of stabbing. Like I, I'm assuming they just not having guns or access to guns out there like we are here in the United States. But these guys doing a whole bunch of stabbing and setting on fire and killing in a whole bunch of awkward ways. But it's seeming like they're killing people that's way weaker than them that they can easily take advantage of and easily do however. And it's seeming like they have no conflict resolution skills as well because if you get into a simple conflict and you can't talk it out and you got a result in violence, then there's something wrong with the way that you're going about these things. If you can't just agree to disagree or have some type of disagreement without a result in violence, that's a very terrible way of communicating, and you need to work on your communication skills. But, yeah, she's um, she's in a hospital. Rebecca chipped the guy. She's in a hospital after her husband um, pretty much tried to turn her into a rotisserie chicken. And this is just a very, very terrible thing. She's very high profile out there, so it's a high profile case. She's a high profile athlete out there in Kenya, so she's in a hospital. She's probably separated from the rest of the people but i'm not really sure how like kenyan hospitals are or ugandan hospitals are like i just from assumption they just don't seem like they would be equipped really to handle real deal medical cases and like as huge as running culture is there i would um i would want to be in another place maybe somewhere in europe or something like germany where they really have state-of-the-art facilities and doctors and things like that to where when you got these abusive people that you can go get the right type of medical attention and medical treatment and just have a better chance of returning back fully and getting back to normal. But this whole situation is highly unfortunate. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. Till next time, I'm out.